Today, we're going to take a close look at honey locust pods. Why honey locust pods? It's because honey locust is the most important and most valuable tree when it comes to silvopasture in the United States. And the reason for that is pretty simple. The reason is stockpile. Now, if you're a grazer, you know that most of your feed costs happen during the winter months. And with the right trees, you can double the amount of feed that's stockpiled and available during those winter months when the grasses and forages are not growing. And by doing that, really, really reduce the cost of feed in your operation. So I've gathered here today pods from three different types of trees to show you the variations in types and to show you the, the difference in genetics that are important when it comes to selecting the right trees for a silver pasture operation. So let's start here with these pods on my left. These pods are from a wild type honey locust. So you can see here, I'll bring it up to the camera. You can see here that the seeds here on the bottom are really pronounced. There's a lot of seed in these pods and much lower ratio of sugars. We did a nutritional analysis on these pods and they came out to around 17% sugar. Not bad, there's some really good energy being produced by these trees. But as you'll see, it's much less than some of the other trees that we did a nutritional analysis on. So these wild type trees give you about 17% sugar. So good energy, but not great compared to some others and that we'll see later. We weighed the, um, the pods that were collected off of a single tree of this wild type and we got about 120 pounds of, of pods off of a single tree. Now in the middle here is, um, is another type of pod and you'll see that these are really well developed. These are long pods and, um, and the development of these pods is really good with good seed content and, um, and a fairly robust section up here at the top with sugars in it. And we didn't, um, we didn't measure, we didn't weigh the amount that came off of the tree that, was, that produced these, but it was in the realm of, my guess is about 100 pounds of honey locust pods that came off of this tree. And the sugar content of these pods came in at 29%, so quite good. Um, a lot of energy that's available from these pods, but the best of the best is this type right here. Now you'll see that the, um, they're smaller. They're much smaller compared to compared to these pods, but they pack a lot more sugar in them. And when we had the nutritional analysis done, these came back at about 37% sugar um, as a dry weight uh, on a dry weight basis. So let's see if we can get this to focus, you can see there that this section has a lot, is where the sugars are at. And this section is where the seeds are located on the pod. So it's the inside of the curve is where the sugars are at. And actually, it's quite tasty. Um, and if I like it, and you can bet that livestock will like it as well, these were collected off of a quite mature tree when this was a grafted tree. And so that's why we get good high production off of a tree like this. And we haven't been able to collect all of the pods yet because some of the, some of the pods are still hanging up in the tree. But our estimate is that we should get about 400 pounds of pods off of this tree. And that's off of a single tree. It's pretty mature. It's probably 50, 60 years old, but that's one tree and very significant yields. So imagine how, many, um, how much production of pods you could have on your farm if you had 20, 30, 40 of those per acre, which is very doable. Um, 
Now, one thing that you should that we should note here about honey locust is that the different livestock will utilize the nutrition in the pods differently. So um, let's take a look at the seeds here. This is a seed of a honey locust. It's maybe the size of a black bean. And kind of like corn, um, cattle can't, um, they can't digest whole seeds very well because there's a hard coating that, that protects the, the inside of the seeds. And um, it, because they can't, their teeth won't grind up the seeds, they can't access the protein very much of, of what's inside of here. They access about 10% from studies that have been done. Whereas sheep tend to, um, tend to be able to grind these up better and then access more of the protein that's inside of them. So um, if, you're, if your winter forage doesn't need any supplemental protein, then you're gonna be completely good with just the, the supplemental energy that's gonna come off of these and a little bit of protein for your cattle. Um, but either way, it's something to keep in mind that if they're fed, if the livestock self-harvest and just pick them up off the ground, that cattle won't be able to get uh, much of the protein that's in here. You'll notice that these pods actually don't have well-developed seeds in them. The tree seems to be putting more of its energy into the energy into the sugars than it is into the seeds, which works pretty well for a cattle production. Um, now, if if the pods are collected and then fed to livestock in a barn situation and ground first, then livestock can make can make much better use of the protein in the seeds. And we're going to be doing some tests this winter to see if standard hay equipment can pick up pods like this and make them available easily to harvest. So once we do that research and, um, and have videos to show you, then we'll, we'll send them out and make sure that you, um, make sure you, that you can get access to those. So if you like this, if you appreciate this information, please like the video. It helps us get the word out more. And also, if you know of someone who would like to make more money in their grazing operation, please send this along to them. You'll be doing them a favor.